Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm doing something a little different than I normally do. Normally I just teach, you know, line upon line and go into great detail on a subject. But what I'm doing is hitting 16 of the major teachings that I do, and I'm just giving a little one-program synopsis of some of these truths. This is because I've got this book entitled Sharper Than a Two-Edged Sword, and it has 16 chapters in it. Each chapter is a synopsis of an entire teaching that I have that may take, you know, 10 hours to cover the whole teaching, but each chapter just gives a brief summary and this is a great introduction to some of these major things. Matter of fact, we have a study guide right here that goes along with it. And we have a number of people that will use this study guide to teach other people. They will have a Bible study and they'll go through these 16 major topics. And as they just give a brief synopsis of the whole thing, they uh, see which one really meets a specific need. Maybe it's the teaching on healing and people want to go back and get more detail. So what they'll do is then go get the materials on that, the study guide on God wants you well, and they'll go into detail on that. Or maybe it's the one on spirit, soul, and body, and they'll go back and get that and go through that study. But this gives an overview of some of the major things that God has spoken to me that has been used to change my life. And so that's what I'm doing on these programs. I'm just giving a brief one-day uh, teaching on some of these major topics. Yesterday I talked about what true Christianity was, what really being born again is all about. And uh, that's what we focused on. Today I want to focus on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you know, there's a lot of confusion about this. A lot of people don't understand what this is all about. And a lot of people think that when you get born again, when you make Jesus your Lord and receive salvation, that you get everything that there is. But let me share some verses with you right here. This is after Jesus was raised from the dead and some of the very last instructions He gave to His disciples before He was received up into heaven. He told them this in Acts chapter 1. In verse 4 it says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith He, Ye have heard of Me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now get a picture of this. Here was the resurrected Jesus, risen from the dead, and He's telling His disciples, don't go tell anybody about this. Don't minister. Don't go share this word. Don't do anything, but you stay here and wait for this promise of the Holy Spirit coming. Now this is major because they had the greatest news that the world had or ever will have. Uh, they had this greatest news to share, and yet the Lord said, don't do anything until you receive power from on high. He goes on to say in verse 8 of Acts chapter 1, it says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. He said you would receive power the word for power there, the Greek word is dunamis. It's the word we get dynamite, dynamo from. We receive this supernatural, miraculous working power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. And many people just assume that all of this, we get the whole thing at salvation. But you know, Jesus said, or excuse me, it was Paul uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, I used this verse on my program yesterday, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. Well, right over here in John chapter 20, Thomas and all of the apostles, when they saw the resurrected Lord, Thomas fell down and said, My Lord and my God. He confessed the Lord Jesus, and he certainly believed he was raised from the dead because he was standing there in front of him. So he fulfilled Romans 10 verse 9. He confessed with his mouth the Lord Jesus and believed God was raised from the dead. And as a result, he fulfilled the requirements to be born again. And yet the Lord told him and the other apostles, don't leave, wait for this promise of the Father. So this shows you that the baptism of the Holy Spirit was separate from this born-again experience. 
As a matter of fact, again, I'm going through these things very quickly. I haven't got time to go into detail, but I do have a book on this entitled The New You and the Holy Spirit that will go into detail and will explain this. You can get this for further explanation. But right here in John chapter 20, the Lord breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. And so they had received the Holy Spirit, but here's a second experience where they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Again, I could go into much great detail on this, but there is a difference between having the Holy Spirit with you at salvation and having this power from on high come upon you at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a separate, a s distinct, separate experience from receiving salvation. You know, my own personal testimony is that I got born again when I was eight years old. The very first time that God really nailed me over sin, not the first time I'd sinned, but the first time that the Holy Spirit really convicted me that I understood what I had done and I heard a message I understood about Jesus being my Savior. I put faith in the Lord and I got born again. The very next day, I was made fun of for being a Christian. And according to the scriptures, I was sealed by the Holy Spirit. You can't come unto the Lord unless the Holy Spirit draws you. John chapter 6, verse 44. So the Holy Spirit is certainly involved in salvation. The Holy Spirit is how this miracle of salvation takes place. You have the Holy Spirit with you and involved in it, but there is a separate experience where the power comes upon you. So as I was describing, I got born again when I was eight years old. I was truly saved. The next day, my friends noticed a difference. And when I told them I had made Jesus my Lord that I got saved, I remember my friends making fun of me. There was a noticeable difference in me. I was changed. I was born again. If I was to have died at that exact moment, I believe I would have gone into the very presence of God. I'd have gone into heaven. So I am not saying that if you don't have the Holy Spirit, this baptism of the Holy Spirit, that you aren't saved. I believe you are saved when you make Jesus your Lord. But these people who confessed Jesus as their Lord, believed that He was raised from the dead, He told them to still wait until He sent the promise of the Father upon them. And this happened on the day of Pentecost, which is recorded in Acts chapter 2. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Now remember, this is over 40 days after he said, receive the Holy Spirit. 40 days after they confessed Jesus as their Lord and believed that he was risen from the dead, they were born again. And yet after that, they received this supernatural experience where the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them. And I tell you, it transformed their life. Just days prior to this, these disciples had been so fearful that they all forsook Jesus and fled. Peter denied the Lord three times that he even knew him. He was operating, you know, just as a natural human being would, fearful that the same ones who had taken his master were going to take him. But after they received the Holy Spirit, Peter stood up and boldly, boldly proclaimed, and there's so much that I could say about this. But did you know that prior to this time, they were disciples. I, I like to say they were disciples because I mean, the Lord would tell them, you know, I, you know where I'm going and you know how to get there. And they'd say, we don't know where you're going and we don't know how to get there. That's John chapter 14. I mean, he would tell them all these things and it's just like they never got it. They were disciples. But all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes and boom, Peter had recall understanding of the Scriptures. He preached a message in Acts chapter 2 that caused 3,000 people to get born again on the day of Pentecost. He had boldness speak through him. And I mean, they were arrested and they were criticized by the Jews for this. And Peter boldly stood up and he says, you judge yourself whether we're supposed to obey God or obey man. And it says that the Pharisees 
took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And when they saw the boldness of them, they were just amazed. Prior to the, receiving the Holy Spirit, they were weaklings. They were fearful. They didn't understand. They couldn't do anything. When the Holy Spirit came, there was power. Just like Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you shall receive power, miracle, miraculous working power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And I'm telling you, receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is an essential for you having an effective Christian life. There are many people who have confessed Jesus as their Lord, who have been born again. If they were to die, they would go to heaven. But they are fearful. They are weak. They are confused. They don't understand. They don't have this boldness because they don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which includes many things, but it includes speaking in tongues. When the disciples received it right here, they spoke in tongues. And you can go all the way through the book of Acts and every single time that people received this baptism of the Holy Spirit, they spoke with tongues. Again, there are some people say, but I believe I got all of this when I got saved. Well, you can see every example. I'm not going to take time to turn to everyone, but in the eighth chapter of the book of Acts, you can see how that Philip preached to the Samaritans. They got born again. They were water baptized. And afterwards, it could have been only a matter of days or a couple of weeks, but afterwards, the apostles from Jerusalem came down and prayed for them and they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. It was a separate experience. In the 10th chapter, you can see Cornelius, that he had Peter come and preach the gospel unto him. And as he preached the gospel, the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they all began to speak in tongues. So in that instance, they received salvation the born-again experience, and speaking in tongues at the same time. In the 19th chapter of Acts, you can see that Paul found some people who were believers, but they had been water baptized, and they hadn't even heard whether there had been a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Man, that is scriptural proof that many of the denominations that we have today must go all the way back to the first century because just like them, there are many people today that have heard about salvation through Jesus but have never heard about this baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when Paul heard that, he explained unto them and told them about the Holy Spirit and then the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they began to speak in tongues. Somebody says, do you have to speak in tongues? No, you get to speak in tongues. It's a privilege. It's not something you have to do. You know, right now I'm not speaking in tongues. I'm speaking in a known language. I'm speaking in English. But I have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I do speak in tongues. I have that ability, but I'm not doing it right now. Does that mean that I'm not filled with the Holy Spirit because I'm not speaking in tongues right now? No, I have the Holy Spirit and I have this power, but I have to choose to speak in tongues. It is something that you have to believe and receive. Matter of fact, when I first received the Holy Spirit, I prayed and asked God for this power because I saw that there was things lacking in my life and I knew that there had to be more. I had zero doubt that I was born again. I knew Jesus lived on the inside of me and I, I had a firm confidence that if I was to die, I would have gone to heaven. But I just was powerless. I was an introvert. I was weak. I, my prayers weren't being answered. And I, just on and on I could go. There were just so many deficits in my life, deficiencies. And I knew that there was more. And I started praying for this power of the Holy Spirit. And I had a miraculous encounter with the Lord that I believe was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I could spend a lot of time on this, but... The Bible says that when the Holy Spirit is come, He will teach you all things and lead you into all truth and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've spoken unto you. John 14, 26. That you would be shown things to come. You would have a love for God come. All of these evidences of receiving the Holy Spirit happened in my life. That was on March the 23rd, 1968. I was instantly changed. But you know, it was three and a half years after that before I spoke in tongues. But that's because I was a Baptist. And I had been told that the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues was of the devil. I was seeking for more of God and asking God for His power and I experienced it. And my life was instantly changed. But it took me three and a half years 
to get over the criticism and the unbelief and the negative things that I had been taught against speaking in tongues. And so I had to overcome those things. The Holy Spirit doesn't force you to speak in tongues. You know, right now I'm speaking in English because I am, it's benefiting people. It wouldn't do any good if I went on television and started speaking in tongues. The scriptures teach that, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and chapter 14. And so I'm speaking in a known language, but I could speak in tongues right now if I want to. I have this power. But see, I didn't understand these things. I was waiting on God to just force me to speak in tongues, that it would be beyond my control. I tell people all of the time that it's very similar to when I stand up and minister in front of a group. I want God to speak through me. I want God to release His power through me. But if I was just to pray a prayer and say, Oh God, don't let it be me. You speak through me. And then I just opened up my mouth and waited on God to make it talk, you would never hear a word. It's me that speaks. But I believe it's under the inspiration, under the direction of the Holy Spirit. But He doesn't physically take my mouth and force me to talk. Matter of fact, this very verse that I read right here was one of the keys that helped me to go ahead and receive this gift of speaking in tongues. In Acts 2, 4, it says, They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Notice, they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. The Holy Spirit inspires it. He empowers it, but the Holy Spirit doesn't speak in tongues. He doesn't take my mouth and make me speak in tongues. Instead, He inspires it. And see, I was praying and asking God, oh, make me speak in tongues. He doesn't force you. You have to, by faith, begin to start speaking and believe that God is behind it. Very similar to when I preach. You know, when I preach, it's me preaching. That's the reason it comes out in English. That's the reason it comes out in Texan English. That's the reason it comes out with my sense of humor and my personality. It's me talking, but it's the Holy Spirit that inspires it. I've seen the Holy Spirit take my words and change the lives of thousands, tens of thousands of people. I know that it's God. I know it's not me, but I have to talk and believe that God uses all of my weaknesses and my Texan and all of this stuff and somehow or another communicates and reaches people. Speaking in tongues is like that. The Holy Spirit doesn't force you to speak in tongues. He inspires you, but you have to take a step of faith and speak in tongues. I know that there are so many people that have been taught against this. Our religious system today basically discounts this baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some might even acknowledge that it exists, but they don't promote it. Even in spirit-filled churches, that this is one of the doctrines that they believe. I go into these spirit-filled churches and I teach on the importance of the Holy Spirit and the importance of speaking in tongues. And in spirit-filled churches, I will have hundreds and hundreds of people come forward to receive it because they acknowledge it, they believe it exists, but they do not give the priority to it. And many members of these spirit-filled churches aren't spirit-filled themselves. I'm telling you, it's not been emphasized. It's not been uh, promoted the way that it should. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the single most important thing that ever happened in my Christian life since my initial born-again experience. And just like Jesus said, you receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You would have never seen me on television if I hadn't have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in this gift of speaking in tongues. It has changed my life. When you get born again, God puts all of this stuff in you. But when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, God draws it all out of you through His power. And there are many Christians who are truly born again, but they don't have any power to release it. They can't, they don't understand spiritual things. The Holy Spirit, one of the greatest benefits of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that your revelation of God just gets transformed. The Holy Spirit is the one who wrote the Bible. He inspired it. And when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in this gift of speaking in tongues, you, it's just like you get a brand new Bible. It's like it's brand new. You read it and the Holy Spirit speaks to you in ways that you never got before. It has to be spiritually discerned. The Holy Spirit has to impart this unto you. And I'm telling you, there are millions of Christians watching my program right now 
who you might be born again, truly headed to heaven, but you don't have any power. Jesus said you would receive power after the Holy Spirit. Not before, after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you would be an effective witness. You need this baptism of the Holy Spirit, which includes speaking in tongues. That's not all that there is to it, but speaking in tongues is one of the greatest ways to release it. Because when you speak in tongues, you're saying things that make no sense to your mind, and it forces you to get out of just your intellect, out of yourself, and you have to take a step of faith and step over into this supernatural spiritual realm. It's just like flipping a switch. Boom, you turn on this dynamo, this power of the Holy Spirit. And I guarantee you, it will transform your life. It will give you an ability to pray when you don't understand how you should pray as you should. You can just turn on this gift of speaking in tongues and pray the hidden wisdom of God, bypassing all of the doubt, the confusion, and the unbelief that's in your brain. You can pray straight from your spirit. In 1 Corinthians 14, 14, when you pray in tongues, it's your spirit that prays, not your head. You're praying from your spirit, the part of you that was born again and that knows God. You see so much more power. In Jude chapter 1 and verse 20, it says, But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost is talking about praying in tongues, and that is your most holy faith. It just moves you to another level. It's like flipping on the turbocharger, the afterburner. You are going to see power manifest. And many of you have received salvation. You have made Jesus your Lord. But the truth is, if you were to be honest, you do not have power working in your life. The thing that you are missing is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I know that there's been so much negative stuff spoken against this that some people are thinking, so are you saying that you have to have the Holy Spirit to go to heaven? No, you can go to heaven without the Holy Spirit. You can get there quicker because you aren't going to have power to be able to overcome. You're going to die of something. The devil's going to kill you. You're going to struggle. You could go to heaven without the Holy Spirit, but why would you want to? Some people think, well, I believe I don't have to speak in tongues. You don't have to speak in tongues. You get to speak in tongues. It is a great honor. You know, if God has touched your heart today, and if you want to know more about this, again, I encourage you to get this book that I'm offering, all of these materials. But we have people on our helpline right now who are baptized in the Holy Spirit, who do speak in tongues. These people can help you. They can not only give you the materials and take your order, but they could pray with you. They could help you to receive. And you could be speaking in tongues in just a very few moments. I encourage you to call that number that you see on your screen. Let someone pray with you. Also, I ask for these materials, but we want to help you to receive this gift of God that is one of the most important things that you could ever receive. God loves you, and He wants to give you this gift. So please call. And as you call, remember to request all of the materials that we're offering. I promise they would be a blessing to you. So listen to our announcer. He'll give you more information. Call or write today. Andrew's teaching titled Sharper Than a Two-Edged Sword is available in either a CD or DVD album as seen on TV. This unique series contains abbreviated versions of 16 of Andrew's most powerful messages. Each is condensed into a single teaching, making this the most comprehensive collection of Andrew's foundational life-changing messages. This teaching is also available in book form in either English or Spanish. As a companion to any of these products, you can also get the Sharper Than a Two-Edged Sword workbook. This workbook is designed for you to use alongside the book, CD, or DVD album. It contains questions, answers, and a list of additional resources for each of the condensed teachings. Also, you'll be able to print off the questions and resource list from the included data CD, making this a perfect Bible study tool. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. The first audio CD in today's series is titled Sharper Than a Two-Edged Sword, Part 1. It's available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. 
we encourage everyone to give, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this first CD free of charge. For more in-depth study on today's topic, True Christianity, you can get Andrew's entire series titled The New You and the Holy Spirit. This series is available on CD, DVD, in a book, and also as a study guide. Contact us today to get any of these valuable resources. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. If the lines are busy, remember you can order ministry materials or become a Grace Partner 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at awmi.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. My medical problem started in 2001 when my thyroid completely shut down. I was diagnosed with Sjogren's Syndrome, which is an autoimmune disorder, which means your body doesn't know what's good and what's bad. So it attacks the good stuff as well as the bad stuff. So in essence, it is killing you. I had been prayed over. I had prayed over myself. And, and when I spoke, nothing happened. So I had kind of given up on healing for myself. So I got to school and over the course of the next six months, every single instructor, whether it was Barry with Revelation or Dwayne Sheriff with the Spirit versus Flesh or Greg Moore on the gifts of the, uh, gifts of the Spirit, Wendell on the Holy Spirit, there wasn't one person. It was the combination of, of all of them. It was like there was an explosion on the inside of me. And I just very calmly began to say, Sjogren's Syndrome, you get out of my body. Lupus, you get out of my body. Carpal tunnel, you be healed in Jesus' name. Back, you be healed in Jesus' name. And I, it was so calm, it was like surreal. And I just knew that it was done. I haven't taken my medication ever since that day. And I am so thankful that I didn't get healed when somebody prayed for me. I am so thankful that I got it through the Word. The school made the difference and I think anyone that comes with a determined attitude to get what Jesus provided for them with open ears and an open heart to receive what He has for them, everybody can receive what I received.